better or worse? What a waste of gas, right? You know, if, if she wins, I still think it's going to be a win. Hey, Mike, I got you sitting over here. It's better than trees at this point. <laughs> we had a call him in for backup. <laughs> that thing's gonna be rough. Yeah. Call in, yeah. I don't know anymore. He, that's that's as far as good win. I talked to him all day about <laughs> Kelly Russ. No, I didn't seem like he was positive. He said, well, I'll tell you about Kelly Russ. It's also a South Pack. Case. Like a good, good one? Uh, or no? Oh. No. Where'd you get that? Is he driving? I think he is. <laughs> you get the impression we might be like not All right. in that Sound check, Jordan. Can you hear me? And can you answer, please? Jordan. I'm here. I'm here. All right, perfect. I'm present, not physically, but mentally. All right. So if you can turn your mute back or turn your volume or your uh, sound back off. You bet. I'm going to get feedback. Are you ready, Joel? Yes. Okay. All right. So I'll start by just introducing everybody. Uh, I will speak louder so you can hear me. 
So I'll start by introducing everybody uh, to the audience. Uh, Mayor Highsmith, uh, Mike Norwood, mayoral candidate, and Jordan Whitener, mayoral candidate on Zoom. Uh, Ron Ankeny is not present for this portion. I'll briefly uh, explain the rules as set by the moderators or for the moderators. So the moderators will acknowledge a candidate. The timer will begin upon being acknowledged. Please do not interject or speak until acknowledged by the moderators. Moderators will ask a question to a specific candidate who have one minute and 30 seconds to answer. If any other candidate would like to respond to the question originally asked or the initial answer provided, they shall raise their hand and upon being acknowledged by the moderator will have 45 seconds to speak. The candidate who was initially asked the question will then have 30 seconds to respond. No further back and forth will be permitted for that question. Moderators may ask a follow-up question for clarification based upon answers provided by any of the candidates. However, no back and forth will be permitted from the moderator question. The opening, each candidate will receive three minutes to provide an opening statement. And then there'll be a next phase, which is the topic questions. Moderators will ask each, each candidate one question per topic. The, the same rules will apply for the answer and responses of one minute and 30 seconds, 45 seconds allotted to another candidate to respond to the answer or question. And 30 seconds will then be allotted to the original candidate that was asked the question. Moderators will have a timer and they will notify you when there's 15 seconds remaining in your allotted time. And the third phase will be the citizen questions. Those will follow the same format as the topic questions selected by the moderators based on the questions submitted by the citizens of Shoshone. And then finally, the fourth phase will be the closing remarks. Each candidate will have one minute and 30 seconds to make any closing statements they so choose. And with that, I would like to thank John Pennington and Ginger Bennett for agreeing to be our moderators today and thank you. turn it over to them. Thank you, Chris. Go ahead, you're in charge. Really? Yeah. Okay. Good evening, candidates. Welcome. There are three topics and four questions for each topic. There's community, infrastructure, and workforce. We're gonna be going in an alphabetical order and since Ron Ankeny is not here, we're gonna start with Mayor Highsmith. Mayor, I'm just gonna start right off the bat and ask you this question. There are a variety of opinions and thoughts on the needs for the future of Shoshone among the citizens. How do you intend to address a divided community in your decision-making and plans for the future of Shoshone? Could you repeat that, please? There are a variety of opinions and thoughts on the needs for the future of Shoshone among the citizens. How do you intend to address a divided community in your decision-making and plans for the future of Shoshone? Yeah, uh, address a, a divided community. Uh, the best way I know to try to do that is through communication. We just got to get the communication out. Uh, we've strived under my administration to do that. We are Zooming our meetings. Uh, I'm putting out a mail letter. We're trying to communicate to the public uh to what's really going on man much of the divide a lot of it has been misinformation and people uh not understanding what was going on and and early on that was probably i wasn't communicating well enough it was part of the problem i was part of the problem but i think we've came a long way but i believe communications is the most important thing uh, so people are aware of what the governing body is doing as a whole. And so they better understand what we're doing. We need to uh, discuss goals and plans and, and uh, not 100% of people are going to agree with that, but we need to get it out where people have an opportunity to discuss it. Thank you. Mr. Norton, the same question. I'll read it again for you. 
There are a variety of opinions and thoughts on the needs for the future of Shoshone among the citizens. How do you intend to address the divided community in your decision making and plans for the future of Shoshone? I think what uh, Joel said, one of the things definitely is key and that is communication. If we have no communication, we have no idea what the desire of the community is, there's no way that it could ever be addressed. And so we'd have to just really reach out to, you know, that's why part of my campaign slogan is together, we can go forward. And with, there's no desire in my position, my thought is to ever try to do this as this is my job and I'm gonna do this, but it's together because this is a small enough community that we need a very close relationship whether the with the businesses, with the with the citizens, with the with the seniors, with with all parts of the community, that together, and as I said, as it was mentioned, that we have a a communication back and forth, and then address as, as best we can with the council and, and and all of these needs, and try to see that. Everything can be done there. That's, that's all I have. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Whitner, you want to take a shot at that? Can you please restate the question? There are a variety of opinions and thoughts on the needs for the future of Shoshone among the citizens. How do you intend to address a divided community in your decision making and plans for the future of Shoshone? So I'll, I'll start by saying that I think the biggest issue is you, you mentioned division. Division is obviously there. You have uh, two sides of the fence. One side believes this, the other side believes that. Communica communication is a small factor in fixing the division issue. The division issue lies with not understanding our our support and I mean our town people's opinions and standpoints. Just because there's a vision or direction, um, you have to take their input in to, to some degree and value them because they are the citizens of this town. Without doing so, that's what creates a division. They don't feel like they're heard. They don't feel like they're, you know, answered. And it's not that you have to bend, bend for them. It's just you need to understand and, and hear their, their standpoint. The next thing is some of those ways to improve the communication is obviously communication is an issue and it's, it's gotten better, but um, obviously the town still thinks it needs to continue to get better. So suggestion box at the town hall, suggestion boxes maybe at local businesses, um, you know, for out of town uh, feedback as well on, you know, different scenarios of what they maybe liked or didn't like, like at the seconds. library or the bank. Um, but I think the biggest thing is we got to come together as, as a group. And you do that by having non-confrontational settings where they can come together and, you know, whether it's a cookout or, you know, something like that, Hi. where they can come together and, and mesh as a whole and let politics be against, be out of the window. Thank you. I'd like to respond. Mr. Highsmith? Mayor Highsmith, you have 45 seconds. Yes, I'd like to respond just a little bit to that. Uh, most of what Jordan just said is all communications. It's communication uh, is, I feel, is definitely the, the key, as did also candidate Norwood did, did speak. Uh, Jordan's ideas are, you know, we're all, all good but I believe almost all of them is communications and that encompasses a lot, but yeah, we definitely need to communicate to the citizenry. 15 and seconds. Thank you. Can we do the second question? Yes, please. Thank you. Mayor Highsmith, housing has become a predominant issue throughout Wyoming. How do you see the housing situation in Shoshone 
and what role do you believe the mayor should play in addressing it? Housing is uh, is an issue in Shoshone as it is everywhere across the state. It's uh, uh, state legislatures looking at ways to help that. The governor is um, on, on, all, on all levels. Uh, we have a housing issue. We have workforce housing. We need senior housing. We need housing for all aspects of life. Uh, we need to to lead for how we how we can. We've been working. I've been working on housing for for years, but I'm uh, but we need to continue on. I know Councilman Zant, myself, and and Chris went went down, and that was one of our things we talked about was rural development was was housing. Uh, but we need to like our subdivision we're developing if we can help the, the town just like our grant for our sewer line we received 1.68 million dollars if a developer was to do that that cost of that that cost of that development would be put in the price of the land we we're getting 95 percent grant so we don't have to our land can be cheaper to help make homes more affordable for the average working man and woman in shoshone thank you Mr. Norton, housing has become a predominant issue throughout Wyoming. How do you see the housing situation in Shoshone and what role do you see the mayor, do you believe the mayor should play in addressing it? First of all, I would just say it's Norwood, not Norton, but that's fine. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, housing is something that I'm very, very familiar with as I am a contractor builder here in Shoshone. Um, we have crossed the last several years been building houses as quickly as we can, just we can't do it quick enough. Um, without question, and I would have known in my notes, I put down that one of our big problems facing Shoshone is the need of housing. Um, as a builder, I, there with, with I, I've got basically just a couple of guys working together. We cannot, do, we cannot address that. From our standpoint, we're going to have to have to look at it. I think with the new subdivision, if that could become a more solid reality, then if we could begin reaching out to other builders, uh, trying to do our best to get somebody else in as well. Uh, I have no question uh, that housing could be filled if we just had housing to, available and. Uh, and so it is definitely a need that we need to do. And I think as, as a mayor, we need to try to reach out and do everything we could to try to bring together others and to help out on this situation. Thank you. Go ahead. Candidate Whitner. I'd like to address it. It's Whitener, um, like Keith Whitener, but please restate the question. Three or two. two. Okay, candidate Whitener. Housing has become a predominant issue throughout Wyoming. How do you see the housing situation in Shoshone and what role do you believe the mayor should play in addressing it? There is a housing issue in Shoshone. Um, I think more families want to come simply because of the, the school district that we are capable or so lucky to have. Um, we by far have the best school district in the county, but I think the biggest thing is the reason that we need the housing is so we have opportunity. However, the housing answer isn't a home that's in the $300,000 price range. That's not the means of Shoshone. So we need to look at the housing being affordable housing, not trying to have homes in that range. There's not the jobs to sustain that market. So this, the mayor needs to be actively involved, um, reaching out to the um, WCDA, um, the development, figuring out uh, what, what means can be addressed and how they can be addressed and what's suitable and what's not. Thank you. Let's move on to a different topic. Mayor Highsmith. I want to talk to you about infrastructure. 
Shoshone's current utility infrastructure from water, sewer, internet, and power is outdated and in need of upgrading. How do you intend to address the multitude of issues facing Shoshone's aging infrastructure? We, on water, we started uh, right shortly after I became mayor was step one. We applied and received a, a grant for a level one on our water supply. Uh, we've done that. It identified, I think, over $2.6 million worth of upgrades. That number's probably a fair amount higher now, but that was what we, what we came up with. We have applied for a level two study on parts of that uh, to look on to continue on what we need. The next step is a level three, and we are in the process of applying for some level three work uh, right now, applying for a grant. The, the town of Shoshone, we don't have enough money to re do $3 million worth of work on our water. We can raise our rates as high as we want. Uh, we're still not going to get enough money. Uh, we got to reach out for grants. So the, we have, the mayor has to be at, very active in seeking the grants. The uh, mayor's also got to have suitable support from behind him or, or beside him, with him as, as uh, town employees, also as the governing body. Because the mayor, it's we, we do it. The mayor doesn't do it by itself. The, all the mayor can do is lead. But it takes the whole team. Thank you. Mr. Norwood. Shoshone's current utility infrastructure from water, sewer, and internet and power is outdated and in need of upgrading. How do you intend to address the multitude of issues facing Shoshone's aging infrastructure? Again, as a developer home builder, we that has been something that we came to the town several years ago questioning. And the answer we got was about what Mr. What Mr. Highsmith said tonight, Mayor Highsmith said tonight, well, we've got studies and with studies in. I, and I'm not sure exactly where all the studies stand, but I feel like that we're gonna to have to do everything we can to get past just the study and stage to application, start doing something, and which I think will involve definitely would have to involve applying for grants and, and, and aggressively pursuing those those around or that direction as much as we can because as as he's already stated it definitely know that Shoshone cannot sustain a growth of that because if it was maybe one thing we might could do it but now it's you know it's it's power it's 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 after it's, it's, it's water uh it's all of it there and so I believe that we need to just as aggressively as we can begin to seek and funding additional funding so that we can make this thing come to pass. Mayor Highsmith has raised his hand. Uh, Mr. Whitener's turn first. Okay, I, 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 my understanding, I get to respond to what candidate Norwood just oh, said. Okay. Correct? That's correct. Yeah, I'd like to respond to that. Uh, the, the Mike made to fully understand on the process without doing our level one applying for that we don't go anywhere else we do not get the grants we have to apply we also did we also did our our uh, master plan for the town the, those are expenditures and without moving forward with that we don't get the grants so we we gotta play the by the game by the rules which do the studies and they identify the problems and they we're looking at solutions, how to fix it. Once we have that, then we can apply for a grant. But it's in order. We have to do it in order. It's, I wish it was faster. That's pretty. Mr. Whitener, I'll go ahead and ask the question of you. Shoshone's current utility infrastructure from water, sewer, internet, and power is outdated and in need of upgrading. How do you intend to address the multitude of issues facing Shoshone's aging infrastructure? I plan on continuing the process that has um, been presented already 
with the studies that are in place and continuing to work towards the ultimate goal of infrastructure as it's one of my top priorities. Um, but like Joel had said, um, yes, those studies have got to be done before you can get the grant money. And so since those, some of them, you know, each step is being played, we just continue the process that's already laid out and continue working towards that. Um, and just having to have somebody that's constantly proactive being the mayor, the clerk and, and the council and, and the uh, town employees, department of works and that, to just be ready for those and go into the, to the water con uh, conferences and figuring out what money is available because a lot of that's talked about there too. So uh, just really following the process, but it is a priority. Um, working with Rocky Mountain Power, uh, we developed <clears throat> a company I am a VP for. We developed <clears throat> um, east of Shoshone out on Shoban Road power out there. Uh, those guys mentioned how distressed 15 it is. seconds. And so um, when we did that, obviously, we brought new power to some of those businesses that were already there and the housing that's east off of Shoban Road as well. So it's it's definitely. Thank you, Jordan. Important. That's your time. I'd like to have. Oh. Okay. Respond to that. Go ahead. You have 45 seconds. 30 seconds, I believe it is. Oh, 30 seconds. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, and, and my just to rebuttal on this would be I understand that we have there's processes, but I also understand that there's times where no doubt there's lags. Things can be more aggressively pursued. And I feel like this is something that needs to be aggressively pursued. And that's I know there is a process, but to aggressively pursue each and every step of it. Thank you. All right. Uh, you want to run down to workforce, Mr. Pennington? Sorry? You want to run down to workforce <clears throat> with a question? Sure, sure. All right. Let's move on to the topic of workforce. And we'll start again at the top with Mayor Highsmith. Shoshone has recently encountered the loss of key personnel. Do you believe replacements can be found locally? And if not, what can be done to attract the qualified personnel to Shoshone? Well, we, I hope we can replace locally. It's going to be hard. Replace may be the wrong word, though, because we lost some very key personnel, especially our director of public works, uh, to find someone that take his place uh, with his many, many years of experience, it's pretty hard to replace that. There possibly could be that unicorn out there in the world somewhere that may that may not be local, that may fit Shoshone, want to come into small town Shoshone that has has the capabilities to, to step in and work hard. It, and but it take years to take some time to get the experience that we lost of our particular system, because that's that that he, that he, that's you can't replace. But all we can do is move forward. We're looking we're looking locally uh, right now for a fix. We we do have two operators from from Riverton and possibly another one coming from Lander in the short term as we're getting personnel in and training them. Uh, Everybody starts somewhere and needs training and can develop possibly into a good good employee. That's what we're doing. Thank you. Candidate Norwood, as a small town, Shoshone has limited resources of personnel to facilitate the needs of the town. What do you believe can be done to bridge the gap between limited personnel and the needs of Shoshone? One of the first things I think we're going to have to address, which we started out at the beginning, was housing. Uh, we cannot have, you know, we may have people, I, I want to work in Shoshone, but I don't want to live in Lander while I do it, because it can't drive from Lander to, to Shoshone. Uh, it can't really drive from Riverton to, to Shoshone uh, on a daily basis. I have done that. Um, both of them, to River, 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 Shoshone, Riverton. To Shawnee to Lander on a daily basis, and it's it just it just doesn't work. 
So, but if they have no housing, so we're kind of in a catch-22 that we have, we need to do this. And so, but uh, in the workforce, I know there's just, most of this has just happened in the, in the town's workforce within the last few, few days, days and weeks. And uh, if, is there any others in town to, to, to uh, fulfill, to fill those jobs? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure because I've not been in that, in that position, but, uh, but I would like to, you know, I think, I think is that there, there ought to be some way of reaching out, reaching even back uh, and maybe trying to see what could be done maybe to, to rectify a situation that may have happened with the possibilities of that as well. Thank you. Candidate Whitener, Shoshone recently suspended the requirement of residency for employees of the town. What impact do you believe this will have on recruitment and what can be done to ensure future employees live in town? Is that a different question? So you're getting a different question? Okay. I believe that's a different question, right? Yes, it is. So we're skipping questions now or two? Joel and and uh, Mike. We're just answer. mixing it up. A I'll, bit. I'll get back to it. I'll get back to it for you. Okay. Well, I just I just wasn't sure what the deal was, so that's fine. Um, repeat the question, please. <clears throat> Shoshone recently suspended the requirement of residency for employees of the town. What impact do you believe this will have on recruitment, and what can be done to ensure future employees live in town? Um, yeah, I was suspended because there's not a whole big, big gene pool to choose from. Um, obviously that's why the town is in the current situation having to outsource. It's obviously not the first, uh, step of approach to outsource those positions. Uh, it's ideal to have it in town, but just like everybody said, it's tough to have a position available with nowhere to go. And right now there's not even any rentals available. So that being said, um, it's pretty hard to have somebody move into town to take the position, even if they're qualified uh, or, or a, a suitable candidate. So uh, it's kind of a, a double-edged sword that is a constant battle in Shoshone, and it will be for years to come. Thank you. Let's see. Mr. Highsmith? As a small town, Shoshone has limited resources of, of personnel to facilitate the needs of the town. What do you believe can be done to bridge the gap between limited personnel and the needs of Shoshone? That's, uh, one, that's one of the driving forces of housing. I mean, that's the big, that's the big picture. That was one of the reasons that got me involved in the housing six years ago or so uh it was emphasized my emphasis was on housing for for school employees and town employees so we have a police officer who wants to come here we've lost many opportunities to hire a good person because we required him to live here in town the governing body chose because of the lack of housing we voted as a group to suspend that requirement uh, so we could hire good personnel until we had suitable housing for our employees. And that's what was the driving force that would allow uh, the chief to hire a good police officer to live out in Hidden Valley. That gives us that opportunity to do that. With our subdivision, we hope that the opportunity we're going to have some housing there there's also some vacant lots that also can be developed here in town uh, we work with rural development on financing there's great opportunities now for people to build or buy in shoshone thank you mr norwood You've already answered that question, I believe. So if I could get you to respond to the, re the requirement of residency that Shoshone recently uh, suspended for employees in town and what impact do you believe this will have on recruitment and what, what can be done 
to ensure future employees live in town? Well, I definitely understand the reason of the suspension. I further would say I, I would definitely favor that being a requirement. I feel like you know, if you go to serve in Shoshone, you ought to live in the Shoshone. But again, it all goes back to that same thing. We just don't have anywhere with our teachers. We, we you know, we face that. Um, a business partner has about, uh, what, eight, seven rentals here in Shoshone that we've uh, built and dumped and all. They're never lacking for a month, not just days before they have a renter if they come in. Um, it's very much that we realize. And so it's, it's a situation that we say, okay, we've got to address that. And it's just gonna, but uh, there's being suspension, suspending that, I feel like it'd be the only one of the best answers to be able to fulfill those positions is to let's make an adjustment, let's do something to allow, allow that to happen. And then if, we, if and when we get housing, then begin to bring that back in. Thank you. Your turn. Wish they're nice. I want to skip back up to community with Mayor Highsmith. Over the previous two years, Shoshone has undergone many changes and business growth has been at the forefront. What do you believe is the priority for Shoshone in the next four years? There again, I hate to keep going back to housing, but that's where we're at. We need housing. That, that's, that's very important to us. Uh, we need to attract businesses. And also, if we have housing, we also need for them to come. So I believe we need to clean up our town more. That's part of us. Quality of life. Quality of life is important to people. Uh, so we it, uh, make our town uh, look more presentable. Uh, have, you know, we got a real good police force that's an important part of quality of life continue to support our police force we've upgraded our equipment uh for our employees continue to do that uh keep keep good equipment that, that's also helps attract empl employees we need to be proactive we're limited on because of our funds because of the census we lost about seventy thousand dollars a year that has hurt us on funding but we need to be proactive and look at the salaries we're paying our employees to do that. All of this will help attract people to Shoshone, promote our school, our lake. Very good, thank you. Mr. Norwood, very same question. Over the previous two years, Shoshone has undergone many changes and business growth has been at the forefront. What do you believe is the priority for Shoshone in the next four years? Uh, I have said, of course, as a businessman, we've also put in an RV park and uh, to establish businesses right here in Shoshone. And so we're very well aware of our businesses in Shoshone. I have said that in the last years as I've lived here, Shoshone is missing out on one of the biggest gold mines there is. And that's all these tourists going through here every day that have hundred dollar bills hanging all over them and we need to stop and stop them somehow, not with the police. But <laughs> <laughs> they've done a great job. And they're just <laughs> but, uh, and, and, but present to them opportunities just to spend more money and more time and present that Shoshone is not just a, a tape place where you turn and go east or west, but you can stop here stay stay around go visit the visit the lake fish in the lake year round there's trails there's backcountry to promote all their our benefits that we do have around here and show them that that as businesses we we can attract and become maybe not a final destination but as a stopping point in the in our destinations thank you candidate whitener over the previous two years, Shoshone has undergone many changes and business growth has been at the forefront. 
What do you believe is the priority for Shoshone in the next four years? Kind of, kind of a revolving door here, but obviously housing is important. Um, obviously, infrastructure is the most important piece here. But the business piece, getting more businesses in Shoshone, is huge. And and the reason it's important is because it creates jobs and it allows Shoshone to become self-sustaining. Without that, Shoshone won't uh, be self-sustaining. Make a joke, touch on um, what. Mike talked about it, getting people stopped to stay there. He's exactly correct. Uh, but we actually, old officer had a stop there and it's landed us a big name talent that's going to play in Shoshone on Saturday that we wouldn't have had if they didn't get stopped because there is no attraction to get them to stop. So yes, that is definitely so. We got to find something that stands out, makes Shoshone something its own for people to stop and, and look at something or whatever the case is, you know, other than other than the, the new travel plaza that's going in, which is immense, but we got to get them to spend money other than just there. Thank you. We've got about 10 minutes left on this section. And uh... let's go back to infrastructure for a bit. It's okay. my favorite topic. Does Mayor Highsmith, does Shoshone's current infrastructure impact the ability of Shoshone to attract businesses? And what do you believe can be done? It, it, it does. We, we'd had the infrastructure a couple of years ago. We had a company looking real hard at relocating in Shoshone. Uh, we didn't have the sewer, the water. Uh, we also didn't have a building. But we, we didn't we did not have the infrastructure for them. It would have brought about 20 jobs that we even cheated. I got the superintendent to open the school on a Sunday and I gave him a tour of the school and they have grandchildren, a young that would have been going to school. They were very, very impressed. But ultimately, we could not provide that. That was one of the driving points that we're going to develop an industrial park near where the current mushroom farm is, and that was where they would have located. We did not have the infrastructure for them. They liked the location, they liked the town. Uh, we, did, we did not have that for them. Uh, unfortunately, many of the workers probably would have lived in Riverton because we did not have housing either. But our land was affordable, they liked the location, and they were a, a, a small manufacturing company. We would have brought 20 jobs to the area, but, but that 15 is, seconds. but that is, but we need to, our, we got to have more infrastructure. We got to have internet. Internet is, that's, we haven't touched it, but internet is very, very important to many people and to businesses. We got to get that. Thank you. Where are we at? Should we switch it up or do you want to answer the same question? Well, I don't want to ask the same questions. Okay, you oh, ask oh, the next uh, question. Which question did you just ask, Mayor this Eisenhower? One. Okay. I'll ask candidate Norwood this. Does Shoshone's current infrastructure impact the ability of Shoshone to attract businesses? Did we ask that? You yeah, already? No. no. No, I haven't. You're asking that. Okay. His box. I did not check. answer that question. No. Go ahead. I, I think without question, yes, it will uh, on business. I think depending on what what kind of business. I mean, if you're talking a a sandwich shop, uh, a little strip mall, something like that, I don't think would be a big big issue. Uh, a few little businesses like that. I think the the town, from what I understand, they're, they're putting in the new. Uh, got the grant for the new sewer going out to the mushroom plant, which is going to be very, very good, very big on that end of the town through the new subdivision area, which will be able to, to be able to work on that. Water has been, and I think, I don't remember, not, I know a lot of it is in, is, is what, what I understand it is in transmission is not really as much as supply, but the transmission keep having issues there. Uh, to be able to get that again brought up to date. Uh, but 
how much would it affect the businesses when we're talking, if we're talking to another, like I said, a little sandwich shop, a, a, of a gift shop, something like that with a toilet and a, and a sink or two, I don't think would be a big issue if we're trying to attract a business, which I feel like we ought to be reaching out looking forward to get into business. As they mentioned, 20, 30 employees, we'll probably be facing some issues where we need a, a entire infrastructure to, to continue to, to grow. And that's why I said to aggressively pursue our infrastructure. Thank you. Candidate Whitener. I would like we'll to go ahead and go ahead. I would beg to differ that that would limit our opportunity at businesses. It never stopped yourself from building homes. It's never stopped you from building an RV park. It hasn't stopped Tim Davis from building what Tim is doing. It hasn't stopped Midstream Energy from spending $270,000 to put in three-phase power out on Chauvin Road. I beg to differ. If the business wants to be there, they'll find a way. They'll make do with what's there with the idea like the mushroom farm has. They've established themselves, but know that they got to have more to continue to expand on what they're doing because they're not just going to do mushrooms. They're wanting to touch on different areas. So that being said, yes, infrastructure is definitely important, but I don't think it's going to hinder any business. Thank you. It, he was addressing Mike, not me, so I can't respond to that, correct? He was responding, he indicated. To Mike, okay. I'll just go ahead and respond to that. There becomes a saturation point where we have, when we went in the RV park, we did go to the town and ask them, and is there enough? Yes, there was. That was the school property. We we're not putting down and what the school and so there becomes a saturation point. You cannot, after a while, you begin to hit the limits. You're going to have to address that. That's why I feel like I'm stretched. Thank you. We're back on Jordan. Mayor Highsmith. Jordan. No, Jordan, you haven't actually responded to the question. Does Shoshone's current infrastructure impact the ability of Shoshone to attract businesses? And what do you believe can be done? Go ahead. Um, kind of touched on what I just responded to, Mike. No, um, infrastructure, you know, it will eventually catch up. But um, if we continue having the steps in motion um, with the, the studies, level one, level two, whatever it is, while those businesses are coming in, it's not stopped the businesses that have wanted to establish there. It hasn't stopped the Mike Dimmick and his operation, hasn't stopped anybody else. Now, you know, it didn't stop the um, rail car shop when it was open. Um, it, it hasn't it hasn't stopped anybody that's wanted to be there. That it hasn't stopped anybody that's wanted to live here based off of infrastructure. Those that are wanting to be in Shoshone will find a way to be in Shoshone. Those that are looking at purchasing the uh, expansion, new town expansion or whatever the name is on it is still looking at the property, knowing the current infrastructure. Um, eventually, yeah. You're gonna uh, put a bandit on a bullet hole if you grow too much, but we got a ways to go till we get there. So no need to put the horse in front of the cart. In my opinion. Yes, infrastructure we got to get addressed, but it's not gonna limit what's there. I think that's just a scapegoat. Mayor High Smith has raised his hand. Go ahead, Mayor. Yeah, uh, if we're gonna differ on this, Jordan, big time. Uh, we we got to improve our infrastructure. Internet is so important. I have friends and family that would move to Shoshone, want to live in Shoshone, but they will not because of our lack of speed of internet. I've talked to multiple businesses says, yeah, what's your internet? They will not, they will not even consider Shoshone because they're <laughs> internet based uh, that needs more internet. And if that's the case will be, we're not going to get them. Inter internet and we need to, the rest of the infrastructure, water, sewer, everything else. I'd like to respond to Joel. You have 30 seconds. Never said it wasn't an importance. I agree. Infrastructure is an important. It's the most important thing. It's the thing that's been neglected for how many years, and that's why we're in the certain situation the town is in. I'm saying it's not going to limit some of the businesses. It's not going to limit a restaurant. It's not going to limit Tim Davis from building his thing. 
is they limit those that have already been here. We dug in a whole new internet line on Showbon Road and perform putting in new utility infrastructure. Those seconds. that want to be there will be there. Thank you. What do you think about this one? Yes, absolutely. Mayor Highsmith. Under the topic of in, in, infrastructure, Shoshone was recently awarded a $1.67 million grant to expand sewer services west. What role in the expansion of additional services do you believe Shoshone would play, should play versus current infrastructure? Could you repeat that and make sure I fully understand that question? Shoshone has recently awarded a $1.6 million grant to expand sewer services west. What role in the expansion of additional services do you believe Shoshone should play versus current infrastructure? I, 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 I believe that we will continue with that project we have started. The governing body has supported that. We will be looking at further grants because we will need to install power out there. We will need to install water out there in that in that area uh, hopefully we're we're going to be installing high-speed internet because we're working on a high-speed internet right now there's some grant money available uh, we're looking towards that we are we're at one time awarded i believe a 3.5 million dollar grant but we couldn't couldn't range couldn't get it done in a timely manner so they had to turn the grant back uh, i've been pursuing that money down in the state to, for high-speed internet for the town because of the importance of that. We've been working as today, we met with engineers discussing our possibilities and financial possibilities on how to acquire grants for, for water. You know, we're, we're looking for, for water, for internet, uh, power, uh, streets. Uh, we're not gonna do it all on our own. We gotta be able to reach out for grants and get some help that we need to do our part in the town to, to do what this state expects us to do to make us eligible for these for these grants uh my you know our relationships that we've developed uh down in cheyenne are important part of part of this and uh it, and uh just we just need to continue on what we're doing and we're, we're getting there thank you I've got one last question and then we're going to go into the next phase of the of the candidates meeting here. Well, that, uh, then can I can I respond on that note? Yes, you may. 45 seconds, Jordan. Thank you. Um, that brings another topic to me. Um, existing infrastructure should serve importance over new infrastructure. We have citizens and taxpayers that have lived in this town for years and years that have the same infrastructure that they had when they first moved here. So the existing should be the forefront, not putting the horse in front of the cart on the new development when the existing obviously is dilapidated. So I think the existing is the point of emphasis of where I'm at. I would like to respond. Mayor Highsmith would like to respond. You have 30 seconds, Mayor. Uh, uh, the, the current infrastructure you're, you're talking about, we have none that, to my knowledge, I know there's been a lot of work about sewer and stuff like that. It's all adequate. We don't have problems with it. Uh, if we were at a 95, five grand on the new stuff and 50, 50 possibly on the old, uh, our citizens are not doing without sewer or water currently with the existing. Thank you. Mr. Norwood. Let's give you the opportunity to weigh in on that subject. What do you, what role in the expansion of additional services do you believe Shoshone should play versus current infrastructure? I think with that grant, um, they have made some very wise decisions on bringing that sewer down instead of just straight down was the, I think the engineer first, first recommended uh, to make it cut back through and go down through more of the, the new development there, there that is on the planning table. 
which is very, I think will be very beneficial on expanding that part. The water does flow right through there. There is a power substation there. However, I talked to the Rocky Mountain Power on that. They said it is not adequate if we put additional housing in there. They said that it's going to become antiquated very, very soon. So that will have to be there, which uh, to, to upgrade that power <clears throat> substation there on just on the outside of town. Uh, I feel like there's been some very good decisions, very good planning to get the things brought in. But as I said, I feel like things are going to have to continue to be aggressively addressed or we're going to fall further and further behind until until we're we have nothing to to take care of. We can build houses and build 50 houses and have nothing to supply them with. Half a, 30 seconds. Yes, just just a just small comment uh, that that this, the substation referring to is really not adequate. Uh, we've worked with the power company and the engineers design bringing power to the new subdivision would be coming from near the mushroom farm. And, and we're looking at that right now and working with Rocky Mountain Power to, to do that. But you're correct, it's, it's not sufficient. Let's move into the, the questions from the people here in Shoshone, shall we? Shall we shall. Go ahead. Mr. Whitener, we're gonna start with you this time. There's a question specifically addressed to you regarding weed ordinances. Will you enforce weed ordinances? It's been going on for a long time and they did cite some specific um, addresses. They want to know if you would enforce the weed ordinances there. Let me reply with, we don't need the current addresses. That's just gonna cause division as our town. Yeah. And that hasn't been an issue. And a lot of the reason I've been, you know, the lot of a lot of the stand behind of why I'm campaigning. <clears throat> Second of all, um, yes, the weed and ordinance needs to be addressed, addressed um, from from all angles. Um, whether you're on the city council, whether whether you are a nobody or a somebody, the weed issue needs to be addressed. There's different ways we can help out with that, and I've talked, been in con, you know, talked with uh, the clerk there now and other individuals about how that can be addressed, but it, it all boils back to out-of-date um, <clears throat> out uh, town ordinances and things. It's hard to enforce. You can only enforce so far based off the ordinance. And so, yes, it's something with, it's a continued effort, and it'll be something that is on the front go of me if I'm elected, and I will continue it. Obviously, anybody can drive by my piece of property and know that there's no weeds there. So I guess I look at it as look in the mirror, but also on that same note, the town has got to take a little bit of self-initiative. The people in the town have got to want to have the pride for that place to look better. And the town can sit there and enforce things all day long. But if the people that have the, the, the weed issue don't want to enforce it and don't want to, you know, make it to what it needs to be, it's pretty, it, 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 it's just counterproductive is where I'm going with it. And so, but yes, I will continue. 15 to seconds. And it is, it is a point of emphasis for me, and it will continue to be addressed over, over the term if I'm elected. Thank you. Candidate Norwood, this is a question from one of the citizens. What aspect of working in local government is most important to you? Good question. <laughs> uh, I think... Definitely in working in local government, you're gonna to have to have a working together relationship. Anytime, and we have seen it in the local and the council and across the past several years where everybody is against everybody. And that cannot continue to be, if we're gonna make any, any decisions based on a community, working together, getting things done, we're gonna to have to do whatever we can do to and we're not Republicans and Democrats, we are citizens of Shoshone, working together for the best and the good of the, of the town. And we're gonna to have to say, okay, I may have to put my personal preference aside, what's the good for the community? What's the good and for the future of the town? 
Thank you. Mayor Highsmith, do you have any plans for community growth? Yes. Uh, our, our, our subdivision is one thing, but all of our infrastructure projects is all for community growth. We need more people here. We have enough people here that'll support a grocery store. Have enough people here, we support a cafe. We need more people living here. It costs about the same amount of money to produce water for 800 people, it does 500 people. That brings in additional revenue. We need growth. We need housing and we need infrastructure. We need housing so our police officers, our city employees, school employees, and others can, li can live here. We need to also expand on our senior housing. We have a waiting list for senior housing. The, the, the best way I, we believe in looking at this, the governing body we're looking at it, is the city being a town be involved with that. We need more workforce housing. So people that have good jobs at Fast Lane or good jobs at the Mushroom Farm or good jobs anywhere else or a new business come in, have a place to live. Uh, and the, the easiest way, or maybe not the easiest, but maybe the, the way to have maybe some control seconds. on the price is that the city be involved in doing that because we can do a lot of it with grants and where it's not, if it's a developer, they're spending all their own money and they got to get it back. We can be better. Thank you. Candidate Whitener, will you have time away from work to devote to do a good job as mayor? Absolutely. Um, I have a flexible schedule in the role that I'm in. Um, you know, unless I have a piece of equipment go down or something like I'm not there. But look, I'm, I'm here. Uh, the As far as that goes, I, I think I have just about as much time as anybody. Um, secondly, uh, I uh, have enough time to even pick up and help out the town in a time of need where they have no maintenance. So if I've got time to do that, I think I've got plenty of time to devote myself to the town mayor. Thank you. Mr. Norwood is next. Oh. He got his. Candidate Norwood. It's all about the same person, it looks like. What are the qualities a mayor needs to be effective? Communication. Uh, I think he's got to have to, again, realize that if this is not his job, this is, or his position, this is a job to do. And uh, as mayor, I would have very little, I guess, things to drive me to, the, oh, I'm the mayor of Shoshone, but as to say, let's see what we can do to help out, to get the job done, to work together, uh, communicate. Uh, but there also has to be some firm leadership because there will be times where you have to say we're going to have to do this we're going to have to make these decisions and it may stir up a portion of the town that that you really don't want to do but once again we have to focus on the goal for the goal for the community and goal for the town and our future and not just well they've always done this and they've always made up by with this and we may, there may be some hard decisions you have to say we have to we have to do that in order to see the best of the community. Thank you. Candidate Whit Candidate Whitener. This is a two part question. There has been substantial pay raises for town employees over the last few years, yet there has also been a 100% staff turnover in all departments since the, since the beginning of the current administration. Question one, 
What do you attribute this high rate of staff turnover to? And question two, what are your plans to prevent such high rate of turnover from occur occurring in the future? Well, I, I think some of it steers back to our current infrastructure and, and the knowledge it takes to know the system that we have because it is so outdated and it causes a lot of stress. But the second thing that, I, that stands out to me is um, being able to, to, to quiet the background that is not happy with one little thing and throws a town up store. But I think that happens because there's so much division. So I think unity will, will solve some of that. And also being open from different angles, whether it's people in the town, whether it's employees, you got to be open-minded. You can't be closed-minded. There's not one shoe that fits all. And you have to be able to hear what the people are saying to you. They can keep stressing themselves, stressing themselves, but if they're never heard, they get upset and they leave. And um, it's evidence. So I, I, uh, I think there's a, a contributing factor to both angles, but I think it, it takes a lot to just say it's one person because it's not. Uh, I think it has a lot to do with different variables. And, and you know, our town is one that continues to, and that's what I want to, it's time to come together as a whole, do what's best for the town and only what's best for the town. Not what's best for one individual or what's best for somebody, but what's best for the group, everybody in that town, whether Thank you're you. here or there, this side of the fence. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Nizek. Thank you, Mr. Nizek. Go ahead. Mr. Norwood. Oh, Excuse me, Mr. Highsmith. Why are you running for mayor? For me, I guess that's fairly simple to continue what I've what I've started, what what I'm involved with the governing body. We've worked together, and we we have developed a plan, uh, and we're moving and we're moving forward with our plan with our development, our housing. It's really important. Uh, I have uh, developed. I think the current governing body we're working pretty well together, and we have developed a relationship with multiple entities uh, with state and federal level and those relationships and knowledge pretty hard to replace uh if any of the other gentlemen or uh, no matter how well qualified they are there's definitely going to be a vacuum to to move some of this forward not on everything but some we're in the mix of uh, moving stuff that I really care for the town of Shoshone. And we got things, I think, moving in the right direction with our infrastructure, with our housing. I feel it's so very important for the growth and the survival of Shoshone. Because if you don't grow, you die. And we're, and that's so important to me that, that that's why I'm seeking re-election to continue what we're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Candidate Norwood, how do you handle personal criticism about your job performance? Well, I have been in the business for as a contractor for the last 25 plus years. I've uh, worked with the public and that realm as well. I also, <clears throat> most people would not know, I've also pastored for over almost 40 years. Uh, so I've worked, in, worked with that, been criticized from church boards to church administrations, worked with them, and you just have to, you accept what they say, and some of it you agree with, some of it you, you just say, well, thank you for your criticism, and we'll just go on. But uh, at no point do I think we ought to take criticism out of a personal vendetta, uh, regardless of how true it might be. We cannot ever use that as a, well, I'm going to and become a personal vendetta that we that we ride that. And I think I think without any question, we need to steer and push back as far away as any time, regardless of my feelings, again, it goes back to what what are we doing? What are we here for? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Whitener, I'm gonna ask you the same question. How do you handle personal criticism about your job performance? 
personal criticism is um, handled for me very easily. Um, without criticism, there's no growth. So sometimes you think you're doing everything right and somebody sees a different light. So criticism is what, what feels growth. It's what keeps you um, driving forward to me. Yeah, I've never not had any criticism, so I keep driving the bus. Let them, let them criticize. You got to take it in. You got you to gotta, uh, analyze it. Look at it from a different standpoint and see how you can better the situation. So sometimes people see a different light and they're right. And you got to understand that. Thank you. Back at the top. We're back at the top. Mayor Highsmith, list in order three capital projects that you would like to see completed during your term as mayor. I, I would, I can. I guess the, our subdivision, that's sewer, water, internet, I'll, I'll call that that one. I guess I, I really want to see that through. Uh, I want to see senior housing completed. Uh, and I I'll, I'll, I'll would like to see develop some workforce housing. And this is all along with the, the infrastructure it takes to do that. Uh, I think that's, that's a big step forward for our community. Thank you. Would you like to toss that out to them? Sure. Mr. Norwood, in order, the three capital projects that you would like to see completed during your term as mayor. I think, again, infrastructure has got to be addressed sooner rather than later. Uh, housing, I think the, I don't know about, I haven't thought about in which order exactly. The town hall, the new town hall needs to be completed and, and the town hall moved over there as well. Um, one of the biggest challenges I think right now is gonna be, is, is and I trust that it'll be finished before, before the new term, but that, that is the, the employees uh, filling that. But then, then the, as I said, the housing, senior housing, workforce housing, and, and just general housing and, and, and housing in general for all the people. A little more than three. So. Mr. Whitener, ask you the same question. What three projects in order, three capital projects, would you like to see completed during your term as mayor? Infrastructure. Yes. Housing and something for our youth to continue to do. Thank you. Back at the top again. Back at the top here. Uh, all these are somewhat retired questions that the candidates have asked or have been asked and answered. How about but, this uh, one? Uh, Mayor Highsmith, what component of mayorship makes it most challenging? Good question. Uh, that's not a not an easy question because it's very can be challenging for many many issues. Uh, communication is is so important that. Uh, I've been challenged by that and I keep trying to get better. Uh, so the citizens know what the governing body is doing. You know, it's, I think it's real important that they, you get the information out to the citizenry so they understand what you're actually trying to do here. If they understand what's going on, uh, there's a better chance they will support what you're doing and help you move forward, make the town move forward. Uh, so they join in on the vision of the governing body, if the governing body, uh, if we're communicating, and a lot of that's put on the mayor, so the people are on board, if, whether it is cutting weeds, building homes, new sewer lines, water, you know, whatever 
it may be trying to attract businesses in. If the community is on page, it makes it a lot 15 better. seconds. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Well, that's all the questions. That's all three topics and all four questions and all of the questions from the citizens. I guess uh, we go into the your closing statements. You each have 10 minutes. We'll start with Mayor Heist. Oh, each wait. has minute one minute seconds. and 30 seconds. Oh. <laughs> I, 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 10 minutes 30 more minutes <laughs> then i'd have an advantage probably over the other candidates <laughs> so we'll start well, with the you. whole closing is 10 minutes sorry <laughs> that's why i'm here <laughs> um mayor highsmith go ahead thank you i would like the polls that uh why i'm running i spoke before to continue what we're what we're doing uh, I believe during my administration, the governing body and employees, we've worked very hard together and have done quite a bit that I'm proud of. We need to continue to do that. Part of leadership is a big important part that, uh, that Mike talked about and stuff as being mayor, you got to have leadership to do that. Uh, you need to, you know, it, but being a leader, part of it is convincing uh, the rest of the governing body, if you have a vision to agree with you so you can have the majority of the governing body, because the mayor doesn't do anything by himself. It's all teamwork. It's it's all we, not me. So anybody comes in and thinks it's me, 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 they will not do well as mayor. It's all got to be we. You're not near as important as you think you are. Uh, when I came in, I had really no idea what it took to be a mayor. I learned the hard way. But it, it's a lot of working together with with people with with and also be able to recognize a good idea from somebody you may not even like or or you may not even even respect, but do the right thing. If you see a good idea, jump on it and and go forward. Work with the people, work with the your council. Thank you. Mr. Norwood. Uh, I have a desire to be a mayor, the mayor because I feel like as a businessman, I've looked at this thing, we considered it quite a bit uh, and looking at what is what did, what should be the best moves for Shishon. Uh One thing that was never addressed really and, it, and yet has been yet addressed is we have one huge employer in this town, but the town has not been in the best graces with and that is the school i feel like that would be a big part is to draw, do what we can to tap into this and bring us together as the school and the, and the town together working together as well uh with each each and every business and, and promote promote shoshone and do everything we can for that um continue with the facelift that's been going on continue to to again to, to strive to put Shishon as a place that's pleasant to be and live and work. Thank, you. thank you. Candidate Whitener, you have a minute and a half for your closing statement. I'd just like to thank all the people that have um, considered any of the three of us first and foremost. Second of all, I'd like to, you know, give a shout out to those guys because those are your contingents. Those are who elect you. Those amongst the town are who come with ideas to better the town. And those are, are who care about the town. So I'd like to thank them, each and one of them. I'd like to, you know, wish Joel and, and Mike both the best of luck. And at the end of the day, I think uh, no matter no matter the direction of either the three of us, I think you see a lot of the similarities with infrastructure and, and, and growth. Um, but I'd like to uh, separate myself and say, uh, I think out of the three of us, um, a young mindset is something that I think will, will flourish in town. And uh, I ask that you guys just make an educated vote, read the League of Voters responses, read County 10's interviews, 
um, as well as this one and collaborate the three and make make a, an educated vote for the, the best candidate that you you fit need for our town. Thanks for the, the town for putting this on and thanks for you guys being moderators. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jordan. Well, that concludes. Unless somebody has something else they would like to add. I do. Yes, I, do. I always add this to everyone who is a candidate. I thank you because it takes everybody putting forth your ideas in order to make this town work in order to make our county work, our state and our nation. We are not built on individualism. We are built on communities. And so thank you for all of you for putting forth your efforts in a campaign and for trying to better your community. I too would like to add something and that's that when you run for office, it takes some courage. It really does. It takes some courage and some effort to get out there and mm -hmm. speak out and let your ideas be known to the people that support you. I thank you for that. I thanks for uh, Chris for inviting me to be able to be on this tonight. Thank you both. You're welcome.